because he was young, he couldn't be caught. That's why I'm saying that he's lucky. If he was young, that's why we have Katombora. The question I ask him today is very clear. I am saying he got the house in several Road without declaring that he was doing a misdemeanor. Now, if he hasn't been arrested by the law, he hasn't been visited, well, he should continue to say that, that he's Mwadikwis. Now, you can't say, I have stolen because the owners are sleeping and go boasting around. I think that's totally unacceptable. Can he actually tell us the bid price for the house in Seboro, how much he paid, and why they as Grand Tonton, who were the receivers, ended up sharing the houses with money themselves. Those are issues. So when you say he wasn't visited, because in this country the only corrupt people are those in government. Those who are outside the routine using government means, I never followed. I think you saw that when we left as the MMD, a lot of my colleagues were in jail, were sent where, even now the people who are being followed are those in government. Those who were adv advising government have never been questioned, have never been followed. And it's a very unfair situation. For example, do you think the 10 million given to, to, to Grand Tonto, 10 million US dollars, as receivers for, for Ramcos, if that was given to the secretary, to the treasurer, or to the minister of finance, you think they would have survived? And go two years later and say, no, they have money in offshore accounts which they can't explain. What type of business does Mr. Hagainde had to be able to have millions of dollars in offshore accounts which he declares? Now, so, if someone has been lucky and have, the law has not visited him, one day the law will visit them because People will go to him and say, tell us how you acquired this house, this asset, that. 27, he says he was 29. He was 29, he had no power at the time. How then did he end up after privatization being such a rich man? That's the only question that people want to know. That's all. I mean, he needs to be firm enough to come to the, to the public and say, this is my history of my wealth. I bought one animal, I bought this farm, I multiplied, and this is how I've been. I was living in this house before I moved to Savo Road, and how did I get this house? Explain! And you understand, Zambians are very forgiving. But please, this issue is like a boil. It continues to fest until you can squeeze it. And the only way is not to behave like he, Donald Trump and hide your records. The best way is to be open and tell the public, educate them. Look, we were receivers on Rampos. This is what we did. These were the reports. And this is the creditors who still wanted to crawl back on government because the 10 million was spent like this, like this. It's simple. They are counters. They say they're intelligent. And for those that I have mentioned, the Lima Bank, uh, the southern side. My compatriot was in the HLM. I'm not the one who appointed them. In the privatization scheme, the late Donald Benza decided that we were going to have Zambian advisors. And I don't think that was wrong. So when you take people to account, you take out the advisors. You can only be as good as your advice. If my advisor tells me six million dollars is okay, and the very next day he's a chairman, look, there's no law which says you can't be chairman. But my question as a, as a person sitting on the other side, ah, so I still have questions as to whether that six million was the correct price.